Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the heavens and all the earth. Mm -hmm. Give him glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful God we serve. Amen. What a wonderful Father who's given the life of his son that you and I may become children of the living God. Children of the living God. I remember when I had my struggle trying to be a child of God. And I remember saying, it's hard to be a Christian. You ever heard that old saying? It's hard to live for God. It's hard to be a Christian. I remember struggling, trying to be a Christian. Trying to want to be a Christian, you know. Uh, I think I was in high school, too, trying to be a Christian, you know. <laughs> but when I think about those tough times and struggling, trying to live for God, you know, as a Christian in high school. And I know you have some memories yourself about that, you know, and, uh, you know, especially we're hitting and missing. We're not in the word of God and we're at church every now and then and we ain't paying attention, you know. And I think that for me, the main thing I was focusing on, the things I was doing wrong, I was more focused on me than I was focused on God. I was focusing on all the sin I was doing instead of all the blessing and, 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 and the love that God had for me. So, uh, it kept me back and forth, back and forth. You know, it's, it's, this is hard. This is hard. I mean, I gave my heart to the Lord. I, you know, and, and, and my life to him, but man, this, this, this is hard. This is hard to, to live for God. God expects a lot and I'm trying, you know, mama, help me. Somebody, you're praying, you're fasting. <laughs> Trying try to do all the right things, you know what I'm saying? Trying to cross every T and dot every I. I want to live for God. Help me, somebody. How y'all doing this? How do you make this work? You know, and trying to keep away from all the bad behavior, all the temptations, and your friends, and you know different things. But I'm telling you, boy, it's so good to know the truth. How the Spirit of God, His wisdom, His wisdom comes and just open our understanding. Open, it's, it's a light that comes and gives us, you know, understanding about God's love for us. It's just like, it's like a, you know, like a pivot. you like, what? You know, so I, I'll just say real quickly, for those who are struggling uh, in your Christian walk, you know, and you, you feel that it's hard to live for God. You know, I want to say that's that's a lie from the enemy. For one thing, I, I come to understand through the knowledge of Christ that he lived for me over 2,000 years ago, up to the age of, what, 33? <laughs> and he was crucified, gave his life. No one takes his life. He said he laid it down. And the same spirit that raised him up from the dead is the same spirit that's living in us. He gave his life. He lived a life that we could not live. And then he showed us that. And then he laid it down for the Father on our behalf that we can live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God. So he's done the work. He's done the work by dealing with our uh, our sin, our condemnation towards God. He He bridged the gap. Amen. So, so, what it is, is understanding we've been born of the Spirit of God. The flesh is not who we are. But His wisdom and the Holy Spirit is guiding us into all righteousness and all truth. That we would bear much fruit. Much fruit and knowing that God's mercy and grace follows us all the days of our lives. That He would get all the glory and all the praise. No, no, it's not hard. Used to be in my conscience, but understanding his great love for me, for you. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, mm. He said, I'm, I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Ooh, what a glorious God we serve. My, 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 my. 
Well, this morning, I want to read from James. I'm sorry, not from James, from Romans chapter 12. I was looking at this this morning. I, it was a devotional reading, and I wanted to share it with you this morning. Uh, living a sacrifice. No, excuse me. Oh, living sacrifice to God. Living sacrifice to God. Living sacrifice to God. I beseech you, brother, in chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, brother. I beseech you, brother. Excuse me. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is what Paul is saying to the brethren. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I come to understand in that right there that God has made it possible for us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Um, now, a living sacrifice. Number one, Jesus. Remember, we just I was just mentioning that how He gave His life, you know, for us, and so we're presenting our bodies unto the Lord as a living sacrifice. We're not a dead sacrifice. We we wasn't put on the altar. We were made. We were made alive to be a sacrifice. Hmm. We were made alive to be a sacrifice unto God. A living sacrifice. Oh, glory to God. So he says that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You, 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 you remember when you brought the animal, you brought uh, uh, the offering to be sacrificed? You presented an offering. You, you presented something in your place to be sacrificed for your sins. You know, he's, you know, so he contrasts and look, you got a, a a sacrifice that went to the altar and died. You got an offering that went to the altar and died. But now you got a, a, a yourself that is a living sacrifice. To me, it's, it's like uh, if the spirit of the one who died <laughs> could speak to you. If that animal that they, the offering that they brought to be sacrificed on behalf of their sins, if that animal would come back and speak to them, what would the animal say? You know, because the animal would be alive on the other side. Wouldn't he come back and say something to them like that they would get an understanding about the life that I laid down for you? Don't you, you need to know something about the life? that you have, that the life that God has given you based on me dying for you in your place. <laughs> Doesn't that sound familiar? But they brought an offering to be sacrificed. But he said, now you are a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy, hmm, acceptable. Holy and acceptable. Set apart. Set apart from the world, set apart for God, holy and acceptable. So those things we need to know that we've been set up, set apart and we are acceptable based on what God has done through Christ. That we can present our body as a what? Living sacrifice unto the Lord. So the spirit of Christ that's living in us is causing us to present our bodies. Through the knowledge of Christ, we're able to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Because knowing this, what's living on the inside of me has allowed me to understand uh, what God, how God has, has accepted me. How he has accepted me and set me apart for his use. For his purpose. Now the purpose of the dead sacrifice was for my sins. The purpose of the animal sacrifice was for their sins. But the purpose of the living sacrifice 
is to bring glory to God, to bring glory to Christ, to bring glory to God that men may know him. Now, now listen, the animal sacrifice brought in, uh, uh, brought awareness of sins, a judgment being uh, uh, conducted for sins. But the living sacrifice, we are bringing awareness, if I could use that term, awareness to the judgment uh, our sins have been forgiven. Our sins have been paid for. Our sins have been removed. Hmm. Our sins have been removed. We've been, we have become the what? The children of God. So present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Your reasonable service. Let him live in us. Let him live through us. That God will get all the glory in our lives with the good and the bad but he gets the glory his wisdom counsel us guide us and leads us into all righteousness now listen to this and do not be conformed to this world uh oh uh oh and be not conformed to this world you are a new creature you are a new creature Oh, 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 we are new creatures. One translation says we're something that never existed before. We have a new life. We're not trying to make the old life better. We have a new life. We're not trying to use rules and regulations to make the old life better and behave. No, we have a new life that is in Christ Jesus. We have a new and living way. A new and living way. He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So by the renewing of our mind, we are being transformed into the likeness of Christ. That this world is not my home. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So our mind is being transformed to... You know, the, till we see that, I believe we see the vision of that. You know, sometimes we see the vision for our house, our family. Our, it, it, let's, let's go back to when we were children. We grew up at our parents' home. We're seeing their vision, their plan, you know, for their house. We're just their children, but they have a plan and vision for what they're doing with us. But when we leave their home, and start our own family. Now there's a vision and purpose for your house. What has God given you? What is God's purpose on your life? What have, what have we submitted our, ourselves to God that his purpose and plan that is in our hearts and our lives? Because, because, uh, uh, uh cause that the transferring by the renewal of our minds, uh, that you may be proved what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the vision that we're seeing in our home where God has called us to, then he opens up that purpose even more, whether it might be on a job. And then it gets opened up even more in our community. And then it gets opened up even more to my state, to my country, to my to the world. You know, that God is using the believers in these capacities of vision of his purpose of what he's doing. But no, nobody's uh, position or place is not greater than any other. But for what God has given us, for where we are, is very important. And it is a great joy to be partakers of the divine nature for what God is doing in the world. He count us worthy through Christ to share in his purpose, his plan, his vision for humanity, laying down our lives for his purpose and his plan. See, see you can't do this on your own. 
You can't just wake up one morning. I, I, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. No, 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 no. This is birth from the inside. It's birth from the inside. Glory to God. It's birth from the inside. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. By the renewing of our minds. By the renewing of our minds. Our minds are being renewed. That allows us to walk in this power of presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. We've been, you know, uh, the renewing of our minds is, is, is cutting away our thoughts uh, from the world, uh, the way we think, fleshly thoughts, and the way we, you know, go on with the system, you know, being involved with what the system does with the No, no, our minds are being transformed, being transformed, and we're seeing it God's way, not man's way. But we're seeing it God's way, that, that God can move in and through us. You know, it's, it's, well, a sacrifice what lay down his life. Not my will will be done, but your will be done. That's Christ said, not my will, but your will. Let your will be done. And, you, you know, I noticed this here. And what I just quoted, we say that, we say that. But when Jesus said that, said, said that, uh, he was on his way to be crucified. He was on his way to give his life for us. You know, we'll say that quickly when it's when it's something, a blessing. You know, something that, you know, I want to get, something I want to receive from God. But through a, through a midst of a battle, through a midst of a trial, through a midst of a test, or whatever, you know, Lord, because some things hurt when we have to walk away or be cut away from. Something that God is, you know, uh, uh, saying to us. And sometimes we, we are hard-headed about doing what God is saying. And when we make that statement, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And when God reveals his will, and things start to shifting. We like, wait, wait, hold, 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 hold it, Lord. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute, Lord. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it. What you mean you didn't mean it like that? You laid down your life. You presented your body as a living sacrifice. Things we suffer are for the greater of someone else. I remember making this statement. I said, just imagine, I was in a Bible study, just imagine if we knew that our lives was not our own. They said, what do you mean? That you were born for someone else. If we were raised to, to understand that you were born for someone else, you were born to help someone else. You were born to love someone else. Being raised like that in your conscience it keeps the selfishness away. You know, it keeps that, this is mine, that is mine, yours is mine, you know, you know, because as kids, we want to, mm -mm, mm -mm, we, we, we're selfish. But being raised to understand that your life belongs to someone else, your life belongs to others. What do you mean? God has created you to love others. He created you to love others. To lay down your life to love others. And, and I'm saying, wow. And it was like, isn't that what God has called us for in the body of Christ as children of God? That we're presenting our bodies to love one another. Lord, help me to love others. Help me to love others according to your will and purpose, according to your plan. You know, what, what, without adding anything to that, because he knows his perfect love. He knows how to move us in love. Because love is sacrifice. Ah, I know, I know, I know, I know. We don't want to hear that. But love is sacrifice. Love is not just what you receive it. When you're loving, it's a sacrifice. Now, 
doesn't mean that every sacrifice has to hurt, has to be a, a, a painful or a, put me in a position of, you know, I can't make it. No, 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 not, not that, not that. The sacrifice of what you're doing, you know, that is bringing life, joy, substance or whatever to somebody else. You know, uh, they say, if it don't hurt, it's not a sacrifice. I don't agree with that. You know, um, meeting someone's need, meeting someone's emotional need, spending time with someone that needs an ear, sacrificing your time to, to, to minister, to share, God's love, not just reading the Bible, but in motion, you know, love is action, it's an action word, <laughs> you know, we can say, I love you, but keep on walking, no, presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, being ready to be used by God, and not being hung up on uh, my past behavior, my present behavior, because God is He's dealing with us about all that. But understand, you're not presenting your body in sin. You're not presenting your body in the old man. God has made us a new man in Christ. So our body is just a shell. Hallelujah. The body is just a shell. But you can present it because it's been washed. It's been cleansed. With the blood. In other words, the sin that's in it cannot and will not stop God from doing what he wants to do when you we yield ourselves unto him. To me, it brings about a conviction, a righteous conviction. When he's when he's using us to do and to go. And to spend time and to sacrifice our time. If there's any, if there's any residue of sin, if there's anything trying to cling, this is when it's destroyed. I find out when, when I'm feeling depressed or depression is trying to have its way or there's some evil going on and this is that going on. You know what? I said, Lord, I am reminded. I'm, I am reminded. It's time for me to go love on purpose. It's time for me to go love somebody on purpose because I'm about to run this enemy up out of here. It's time for me to go love somebody. I, I challenge you the next time depression, or whatever comes your way or a bunch of confusion try to come your way. If your household seem like it's upside down, I dare you to just to bust out and start loving. Just, just start loving. Just, just, just start serving. Whatever you gotta do, and watch that enemy leave. Because it's not about them; it's about you. This is how we're gonna control. This is how we're gonna bring ourselves uh, 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 under the subjection of uh, our thoughts until the until the will and the purpose of God. You know, as allowing myself to love on my brother, and my sister, to where that it would bring everything and line it back up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, so. Don't let uh, your thoughts and, and, and whatever uh, uh, behavior keep you from presenting your body. Understand what I'm saying. Now, I'm not saying that you're doing something in sin and then you're going to present your body. But if you're waiting to stop sinning, hey, if you're waiting to say, you know, I got to get this right before I can present my body. I got to do that right before I can present my body. But then nobody's nobody qualifies. Nobody qualifies. The body has been crucified. The only reason why it's alive unto God is because of the spirit that he may move in and through us. See, to glorify him. We wasn't glorifying God before. But now God is getting the glory because what I used to do or how I used to be, I'm not that anymore. So my testimony is about what he's done on the inside. Hallelujah. How he changed my heart, saved me and, and brought me to himself and called me his own. That's the testimony that we have in our hearts. And so we're going to present our body through the mercy and the grace of God. 
that we may hear from him and do a, do what he has called us to do. Amen. Glory to God. I think I'm talking about here. But I'm going to end this with this as you go on with your day. Amen. Uh, at the end of this, he says, um, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good. You're going to prove what is good. Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hmm. Renewing your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable. Now listen, let's go back up. He says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. So you're going to, then you may prove by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable <laughs> and perfect will of God. Perfect will of God. Are you in the perfect will of God? Have your mind been renewed that you can see the perfect will of God for you? That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Love. Love. That's the perfect will of God. It's love. And he has begotten us by his love. His son. Jesus Christ. God has shown us his love. That is the perfect will of God. Through his love. That we might present our bodies. As a living sacrifice. Unto him. That he may be glorified in us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. God keep you in all of his ways. Amen. Father, we give you thanks because you are a wonderful and loving father. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray that you bless everyone who hear and come in contact with this word. And we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. And I'll see you next time.